detention place. So we'll call this meeting of the Planning Commission to order. Um, we are first on our agenda is to approve minutes of September October. October. Well, actually, we have September 9th, 18th, which is the minutes from our education meeting, um, which did not make it to the agenda, and the October minutes as well. So I don't know if you folks took a look at those September meeting minutes or not. So I didn't. Okay. We can we can we can postpone that if we want. I move that we accept the minutes and submit it uh, for October 2nd or 3rd or whatever. Is there a second on that? <laughs> second. October 2nd. Any further discussion? I thought I remember noticing something in the education one, but I might be wrong. Um, be the uh, education meeting. Not, not the, the education October meeting, because we're going we're gonna to wait on that because nobody cause it didn't make it to the okay. agenda, so we'll, okay. we'll do that next one. That's fine. There was no action taken at that meeting. Anyway. Okay, anything on the October 2nd? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So first item on our agenda is to amend the village zoning regulations, and that is to convert <coughs> residential low-density parcels along River Street to residential medium density. And we have a revised map. So this is a public hearing for a, a zoning map change. And I don't know um, how many folks are here for the village zoning map change. Okay, so have you guys seen this new map? Okay. Pardon? When you say new map, what, what, what no, they, they, no, they haven't seen the red line map. They haven't seen there's a, there's a, there's the a, original map. There's a red October line 2nd. map, which has that a slightly just different boundary. Yeah. Okay, so do you have other copies so people can I have can like two copies in there, yeah. I thought we could explain yeah, we can, it. We can actually share it. Well, maybe I'll share it. Can you guys keep watching? Check this material. Yeah, just yeah. pop such that everybody can see it. So is this, is this different than the one with the black line? Yes. yes. And why did this come out? Because we're just learning about this. Yes, right today. Today. Oh, wow. No, I just went and revised it because I got a lot of comments from the neighborhood. And I felt um, to address those comments, I just went and redrew the lines and looked at all the parcels and the uh, lot size, et cetera, et cetera, try to eliminate the subdividable ones as best as possible. And, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm Nick Burke. I'm an attorney. I'm representing yeah. Kurt and Phyllis Garish. It, it, it just seems that um, certainly my clients didn't even learn about this proposal until last week and now we right. come to a meeting and you're we're here to comment on a new map that is only being produced today and nobody has seen it, uh, no 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 it's, it's for discussion at the moment we couldn't act on this because it's too much of a change to act on tonight okay but it was brought about because of lots of comments from kurt and other people on this matter right so given that that what we'll do is open it up for comments. So if folks have comments on the, the village zoning change, um, as Michael explained, he redefined the, the perimeter of that change. <laughs> and I'm not sure I even understand. I don't <laughs> think the intention, I'm not sure. I just got this map this afternoon yeah. like everybody else. But the intention, I think, was to um, take some of the lots that this would uh, allow to be subdivided with the initial map that was circulated and make it so that those were not included. Right. The intention being to, um, I think, I don't want to speak for Michael here, but I think Michael's intention was to make it so that uh, this rezoning would um, not create more subdividable lots, but would rather um, make the zoning match what the current um, yes. lot sizes are. So were, were all of the nine that were previously identified as being subdividable removed? From no. This? No. Some of them due to the circumstance of where the house is placed, etc., preclude a subdivision. Because they have enough land if you removed everything from it and had a blank slate, but with the house located on it, it just doesn't make sense. But uh, uh, there's one person is asking for this. This would allow him, Hans Meyer, to subdivide. And then his neighbor has a swimming pool that would have to be removed to create a subdivision, which is highly unlikely. It would also create a backlog. 
in the other lots, um, the Garish and the Schubert lot were removed and remain as a residential low density. The Coven and uh, Van Meter lots on Mountain Avenue, the other end of Mountain Avenue, would be removed because they're large lots. Uh, the Jet Dickinson property is on the east end of this. Uh, the way the house is placed would make it very unlikely to be able to subdivide. And the same holds true of the Beale property, which just barely has enough land to subdivide. Can we, can we pause and can, can we ask maybe perhaps the board to present the purpose of doing this yeah. and why? Why just this start up? over? Okay. Yeah, let's let's just start from the top so we can hear kind of the whole. Oh, well. So last month we had a presentation from actually from a resident in this neighborhood who um, <coughs> was interested in subdividing his parcel. But in his discussion of looking at the parcels in that neighborhood in the residential low density, many of those parcels along River Street are non-conforming. And so many of them would be more conforming if we change the zoning to be residential medium density. And so that was, when, when the board looked at this at the last meeting, it actually made sense. But I agree, we didn't have a lot of time for public input, but that's what this meeting is for tonight, is so that we can have the public respond to this um, proposal. And with the new map, because this is a significant change over what was actually warned, we will not be able to take any action with this new map tonight. So what we're going to be doing is taking public comments at this time, and then we will reassess and figure out what to do. So, so and what I will ask is when you make a comment, please um, identify yourself so that we know who's making comments. Thank you. Uh, I'm Ken Van Meter. I live on Mountain Avenue. Um, I was, I guess, uh, initially on that first outline, my lot was in there. I take it now it is not. Is that correct? Did I, did I understand that correctly? I don't know. I, unfortunately, I don't know. I don't have um, property names on these okay. parcels, so I don't know which one is yours. All right. But um, to, just to summarize what's been said so far, you're telling me that one person in the neighborhood is interested in subdivision, right? That's how this conversation started. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, supposing nobody else in the neighborhood is, is interested in that, does that make uh, does that have an impact on you guys? It is. Um, it is worth discussing. <laughs> I just think so. <laughs> uh, no, I mean the thing is that we look at we look at. I mean, we're as the planning commission. We look at the regulations. We look at the zoning maps. We write the regulations right. and um, make changes to the zoning map. And so these kind of people, people will come in, and you will hear another one tonight mm -hmm. about somebody wanting to make a change that's, that has impact on the map and how its on property is sure. used. So we will be potentially changing the zoning regulations because one person came in and asked us. That's usually how these conversations start. Yeah, sure. So, so this is a conversation. Um, and as I said, it made sense when we looked at it because most of those parcels are non-conforming right now. Is there any reason why they couldn't just be grandfathered in? I mean, they, they, have, they, have, they have already um, applied for a variance and they were not oh, okay. able to subdivide. Right, okay, fine. Um, I guess uh, I'm sure there are other people who may have the same concern, but my concern is that the, the neighborhood has a certain um, character to it. A lot of historic homes in there. Um, some are newer and some aren't, but there are a lot of historic <laughs> homes in there. Um, people buy property in a particular neighborhood because they like the neighborhood. And um, uh, they also make a significant, uh, for most of us, one of the most significant investments we ever make is obviously our, uh, our home. And to see that um, eroded in some manner is is disquieting and it seems to me that it would be an erosion of the uh, possible a potential erosion of the, the character of the of that uh, area of the village and also a potential erosion of the property values yeah, again uh, my name is Nick Burke and I'm representing the Kurt and Phyllis Garish who couldn't be here um, and they did ask me to relay uh, comments to you about the proposal, which they only 
learned about late last week. Uh, when did, they, did they receive a letter? They eventually did. Uh, it arrived, I believe, a Friday of <coughs> last week. Yeah, they're in Florida. They're probably okay. thinking about it. They have expedited uh, forwarding, so it only usually takes a day or two longer than when it's delivered to their mail here. But it, it seems to them, uh, first of all, that, that you know the input until tonight's public hearing, where had the thing not been changed, you might have voted on a change, hadn't been reviewed with the members or the residents in the neighborhood that's affected without any input from them other than a concern raised by, by one resident who wants to subdivide his property. And it feels very rushed, uh, and particularly after we review the documents that we did receive. Um, even though um, Mr. and Mrs. Garish didn't uh, receive uh, notice of this until last week, on October 11, uh, the commission forwarded to uh, all of the abutting towns, uh, the Two Rivers, Ottaquichi, uh, Regional Commission and the Department of Housing and Community Affairs, a whole packet describing what was proposed. It wasn't provided to the residents who would be affected. Um, and and th that's upsetting that, that the people who were most affected hadn't been notified when it was actually uh, provided, information provided to okay. abutting I'm towns I'm and I'm others. I'm going to pause for just a second and ask Michael, is that true? I believe they were sent out. We sent it out. We sent it out to the papers and to the the uh, abutting communities before to make sure they get it in time. Then we sent the packet out to the neighborhood. I don't know exactly when the neighbors received that or whatever. My understanding it was sent maybe on October 30. On October 30. Yes. I okay. doubt that, that very that. strongly. So, so I'm, I'm, we as the commission don't really have anything to do with that, but we will um, certainly yeah. check that and, and see why that, that happened. Well. But it certainly yeah. gives us with the feeling yeah. that this is being rushed through without yeah. proper uh, time to analyze, uh, see what studies have been done to support this change, uh, and, <coughs> and understand what, what the impacts might be. Particularly when we take a look at the packet that was sent out to the budding towns and the two rivers, in the Department of Housing, um, where there's a number of statutory criteria that have to be reviewed and commented on. And the comments that are provided to a number of these are just conclusions. There's no data, there's no analysis. Uh, as an example, <coughs> there is a, a statement that there will be, uh, it will not significantly increase traffic, but no statement as to how that was arrived at other than just a simple conclusion. There was no uh, data presented about current traffic, no traffic studies about projections for changes if these, at then nine, I don't know how many are left, lots are subdivided creating additional housing units. Um, another statement, just a blanket conclusion, no negative cost to the community. Um, yeah, based on what? Uh, there's no data provided, there's no explanation, it's just the conclusion. Um, the way the, the plan was drafted, there's a talk about this is going to be promoting um, the goal of uh, providing for additional affordable housing uh, in, in Woodstock. And yet, the way the original plan was drafted, and I'm not quite sure having just received the new plan, it was a dog bowl with two bulges at each end, nothing in the middle, specifically excluding the largest parcels in the neighborhood. So that just seems very inconsistent. Uh, and it's a, it's a direct conflict with uh, or uh, with your uh, village and town plan, um, which has, uh, I admit, a goal to provide for affordable housing. And that, I think, is like goal number four in the housing section. But uh, goal number one in the, uh, in the historical uh, section of your town plan is that you're going to preserve the historical status. Uh, so there's a conflict there that's not analyzed. Uh, and, and in this particular case, my understanding is that this particular neighborhood is in both the state and federal historic registry. Um, the question I think was already raised, why is this being presented? Um, and the, the rationale as I'm hearing it is that this is to uh, uh, acknowledge or bring into conformity a number of lots. But those lots existed at the time the zoning ordinance was adopted and are grandfathered in. And there's no restriction or in, increased restriction um, imposed by having them as grandfathered lots in the, in the current uh, district that they're zoned. Uh, all this will do is allow for a further subdivision of some lots, fewer than were originally proposed, I understand, but still leaving some to be subdivided, which will increase the density, increase the number of housing units uh, in this uh, particular uh, neighborhood. 
Um, there are plenty, I'm sure, other areas in town uh, that have similar issues, and yet um, I'm not aware of any proposals to do this particular zoning change to, to uh, adjust all of those other areas. And there must be other areas in the town where uh, it would be probably more um, likely to be developed for affordable housing than uh, River Street and uh, Mountain uh, Avenue. Um, I, I did take a look at uh, all of the lots that were originally part of this proposed zoning. I believe there were like 26 of them. Uh, and I took a look at the assessed values for this, uh, this property. The total range of, of all 26 was a, from a low of 166300 to a high of a $1,298,000, with the uh, majority of them, 18 out of that 26, uh, having a, an assessed value of in excess of $400,000. If, this pro you know, if these properties that are now going to be available to be subdivided are subdivided, nobody's going to spend money to develop these particular properties as affordable housing. This is not the neighborhood that's going to be attractive for that, and, and I'm sure that it would not be economically viable. If somebody's going to subdivide, they're going to be building a house of significant value that's <coughs> going to be consistent with the other houses uh, in, in the, uh, the neighborhood. So this area is not going to be the site uh, I would expect of your affordable housing uh, initiatives. Um, it, it, from Mr. and Mrs. Garrish's perspective, this is just not well thought out. And it, while we understand the initial motivation, um, I did take a look at the uh, uh, zoning board's decision uh, when the application for the variance to subdivide was denied. And I know there was a suggestion that the same goal could be accomplished through creation of a condominium with the two units on the one lot that would not require subdivision. So while certainly we're sympathetic to the situation that that, that uh, resident finds uh, himself in, uh, that shouldn't be the reason to, to make this drastic change that's going to uh, change the character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Yes. I'm Mimi Baird, and I live at 18 Mountain Avenue, and my neighbor, uh, Jim Sliger and Diana Savelberg are at 16 Mountain Avenue, and they could not make it today, so they sent you all, I think you got it, a letter that was sent on Tuesday, November 5th. It went to Michael Brands and you, Sally, and uh, Lynn. And um, I'll be repeating some of the, in this letter, some of the things that, that he spoke about, but I think that, helps make a, a point. Um, so, to the, this is addressed to the Woodstock Planning Commission. Yes, and it has been forwarded to the full commission. Oh, so you don't think I need to read it? Okay, good, all right. Uh, all right, to the Woodstock Planning Commission. We own the property at 16 Mountain Avenue and are writing to object to the proposed rezoning amendment referred to in the undated public hearing notice we received in the mail on November 1st, Neo Post dated uh, October 30th. The proposed amendment is ill-conceived and does not follow sound governmental, zoning, and management practice. It appears to have been done in haste without supporting communication, studies, and analysis. The process used um, the process used appears to have, oh, I said that, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. let's see, the process used um, appears to have been done in haste without support, well, I've already said that, the, pro oh. the process used has a lack of substance which, which would create a precedent whereby an existing zoning could be easily challenged in the future. What is the problem that per Proposed, the uh, proposed amendment is trying to solve. If it is intended to deal with non-complying properties or affordable housing, there are other areas in Woodstock where these issues exist. And these issues should be dealt with by a town-wide study, analysis, and discussion, rather than focusing on just this one neighborhood alone. <coughs> the proposed amendment says it will not significantly, quote unquote, increase traffic and 
uh, end of quote, or have any, quote, overall impact on the neighborhood, end of quote. But there are no studies or any evidence that this is the case. To the contrary, the proposed amendment would appear to permit at least nine parcels to be subdivided without any variance proceedings into additional small lots, shoehorning, shoehorning in at least nine new residents that could likely become short-term rentals. This will clearly increase traffic and impact the neighborhood. The proposed amendment provides no explanation of why the existence of grandfathered non-complying parcels as a problem um, is a problem and in fact such a problem that it must now be solved similarly in this neighborhood alone without any prior discussion or communication with the affected or surrounding properties. The delineation of the proposed new medium density district is arbitrary and capricious. That is the basis for, oh, what is the basis for the uh, boundaries? Why are some properties included, others are not? There is no analysis or discussion of setbacks, frontage, access, or flag lots with respect to possible new lots. The proposed amendment said there will be no impact on vacant land, but it also takes the inconsistent position that it will allow for additional safe and affordable housing. Notice of the public hearing has been inadequate. A letter, sending, a letter setting forth the proposed amendment was sent to abutting towns, the uh, Two Rivers Ottaquichi and the Department of Housing and Community Affairs, dated October 11th. We are abutting landowners and only happened to hear about the proposed amendment from a neighbor on October 30th. <laughs> Notice was Neo posted to us on October 30th only after we called the Planning Commission to inquire about the proposed changes. We believe the proposed amendment is an attempt to accommodate a single property owner whose subdivision variance was recently denied. To do that, this, uh, this rezoning amendment is now proposed on short notice, and I'm almost finished, um, and would permit the property's owner's subdivision, as well as that of many others, to negate detriment of the entire neighborhood. For all the foregoing reasons, we urge the Planning Commission to disapprove the proposed amendment. Well, <coughs> you know, um, yes, but my name is Ann Crothers. My residence is 23 Mountain Avenue. We never received a letter, and the only reason why I thought was because we are not directly involved in this. However, I'm taking a different look at this. I'm looking at, because I've been redoing our house for the last couple of years, we had to put in a new sewage system, and we connected it to an antiquated town system, which is only six inches below the ground and is compromised. And not only that, I also came into issues with the water system, which is also antiquated. And thirdly, electrical. We had to add more power for our kitchen. And the, we were told by Green Mountain that it is maxed out the whole area. So you're not taking any of these into consideration, the infrastructure, what potentially could happen to this antiquated systems when you add more housing to River Street and Mountain Avenue. And that's my, why I am concerned about this. Yes, and then my question is also the rezoning. Does that mean we are no longer in the village? Does that mean our taxes get lowered? Are we part of the town now? Of course not. The village boundary is established. It's very different. Well, yeah. you're rezoning, okay? And you're decreasing the value of the properties. But I don't want to get into that because that's already been discussed. I'm getting into the antiquated 
infrastructure that the town yeah. has. Point, yes. And how are we going to <coughs> be able to handle that with additional, I'm waiting for it to have a catastrophe here really. And that was quite evident when I had to put a new sewage system connecting it to the town's antiquated system. And that's also the water. We know what happened in 2011 about the water and the electrical from Green Mountain Associate uh, Power saying that that is totally maxed out in the River Street and Mountain Avenue area. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to bring up okay. that you should take into consideration. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm Catherine Harwood. I live at 17 Mountain Avenue, or I'm trying to. And even before I've been able to move in, two cars, not one, but two cars have come around this corner, have missed the right angle, have broken a, con a granite post, and ended up in my garden, leaving plastic bumper fragments and parts of headlights. That was the first accident. The second one uh, took out a further section of my picket fence. So there is already an outstanding problem of traffic and traffic making its way uh, around Mountain Avenue where this proposed uh, medium density uh, section is being uh, shoved down our throats. Um, I came tonight because I received the first map here, uh, the black one, mm -hmm. and to my alarm and surprise, I just picked up the red one, which includes three additional parcels that are directly opposite my house. And if there is increased density, even as condominiums or short-term rentals, um, I believe I will be getting cars in my house, not just in the garden, but in the house on a regular basis. This is a very narrow lane. It's absolutely lovely. And there is a public park with the, uh, mount, the uh, trailhead to the top of Mount Tom and the beautiful Faulkner Mansion and the park where parking is always a problem. So none of this uh, is reflected in this, um, this uh, scurrilous redistricting proposal. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Linda Smitty. My husband Jim and I live at 28 Mountain Avenue. Uh, and I would also like to introduce our lot. We have a 9,000 square foot lot. It's a small village lot that is currently in the, um, uh, uh, in, in the 20,000 square foot minimum lot size. And even though the proposal would benefit us by easing some of the setback restrictions on our lot, we oppose the proposed rezoning. And um, before I give my comments, I would just like to thank the members of the Planning Commission for your time and I know the effort that goes into all of this. Uh, my husband was on the Planning Commission in the 1990s for a number of years, so I know firsthand um, some of the issues from the other side of the table. Um, I, I'm going to begin by referencing the October 11th uh, letter that has already been referenced <coughs> twice, and it lists two justifications for making this change. The first is, as has been mentioned before, increased opportunity for affordable housing. 
We have a case study right in our neighborhood that shows what the effect of such subdivisions is. And contrary to what is asserted in that October 11th letter, it does not move in the direction <coughs> of making our homes more affordable. If you are, are familiar with uh, River Street number 13, at the far side of the cemetery as you're going through the, uh, toward the Iron Bridge, away from the covered bridge, on the left-hand side of the street, there is a, an approximately 30,000 square foot lot that has been subdivided. And my, I was informed that the subdivision occurred before the current zoning regulations went into effect. So it was grandfathered. The front house, there are two houses. The front house is an 1850 house of about 1950 square feet with a, uh, after the, the restructuring, roughly 20,000 square foot lot. The back house is new construction. It's quite a large house, and uh, the total lot for those two uh, buildings was originally was 30,000 square feet, maybe 32, anyway, in that area. So if you pass by that area, you will see, oh, and pardon me, the smaller brown house, 1920 square feet is currently on the market for $698,000. Not exactly within the uh, category of affordable housing and certainly not complying with the state statute <coughs> definition of what affordable housing is. Secondly, the October 11th um, uh, letter refers to many if not most of the properties being overzoned, which means that ours is overzoned, that we are in uh, the minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet, even though our lot size is only about 9,000 square feet. However, if you look at the properties that are actually in that zone, the one of the ones that is continuing in the new map, the one that was just distributed, and uh, belongs to, the, I believe, the person who, who originally uh, petitioned the board regarding this matter. That lot is over 30,000 square feet. That means it's larger than our neighbor's uh, lot, which runs from River Street to Mountain Avenue, the full length, our lot plus an additional 4,000 square feet. 30,000 square feet is not overzoned. In fact, you could argue it's underzoned. Secondly, all of these properties are, of course, within an historic district. We are on the historic district is on both the Vermont State Register and the federal, na the National Register of Historic Districts. The requirements for getting on those registers are the same. <coughs> if, and I haven't had a chance to count the number of potentially subdividable uh, lots under the new map, there were nine in the old. You add nine units of, relative, of new construction in uh, out of 26 uh, 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 lots that are being rezoned, that's over a third. That is definitely going to have an impact on the historic nature of our district and on the visually historic uh, nature of our district. Okay. Uh, further, the town plan specifically says that its purpose is to protect the historical settlement pattern. Uh, rezoning a third and adding, um, and adding new construction to a third of a small number of lots is not protecting the historical settlement pattern in my view. Uh, the, <coughs> any changes are supposed to have a rational pattern of development concerning both the aesthetic 
and the historic value of the district. The visual environment includes both structures, the homes themselves, and the uh, natural environment. And our town plan identifies <coughs> this as the natural foundation of the, or the foundation of the identity, the assets, and the future of the village of Woodstock. People are attracted to our village because of its beauty, because of its historic <coughs> significance, because it is complementary with our adjacent national park that itself emphasizes conservation and preservation. And finally, the uh, town plan specifically states that the spaces between buildings are of equal importance <coughs> to the buildings themselves in our district. This will only decrease spaces between um, the buildings. Uh, the October, I mean, the notice issue has already been mentioned. Our, the posting of our notice, was, and I saved the envelope, was October 28th. You've already heard that another uh, neighbor's, the posting was October 30th. That is, those are roughly um, over two and a half, almost three weeks after the October, uh, the October 11th letter. The October 11th letter contained background information about the purpose and the impact, potential impact of the zoning. We received, the residents received none of that information. So I encourage the Planning Commission to give all of these aspects serious thought and also to, not here and now, but to justify why a 30,000 square foot lot that happens to belong to the original petitioner is still included in the redrawn map when it would be very easy to exclude it and when smaller maps have, I mean smaller lots have already been excluded by the, uh, the newest map. Thank you very much for listening to my comments. Thank you. I'm Wendy Wright Marin in 39 Mountain Avenue and I just wanted to uh, pick up on the historical district point that's being made I'm in support of all the points that have been made with respect to objections uh, I raise a question or and or make a point and that is in the original decision-making process when this particular neighborhood was all grouped together clearly with smaller lots as low density it was intentional it was not it cannot have been an omission or an error and the best that I'm hearing so far is that it went about in the 90s my question is that the zoning that we have now before any changes but I don't know that that to be true but my question to you is was this low density zoning decision that was made the, was the wisdom of that attached to the design historical design review uh, dis, uh, introduction of the distor historical design review process because I wonder if the wisdom of the two do not, in fact, belong together and should stay together. I, I do not have an answer to that question. Um, design review has been around since the 1980. 1980. And I don't know when these um, going. 1990 is when these last three were done. I will offer that uh, I bought our house happily because it sits in a historical district and design review for the reasons that that offers. And so I continue to support that that consideration be 
taken in this particular case. Planning commissioners, people have anything they want to say at this point? No, there's no one who's speaking for the subdivision. Okay. Well, no, it's not. It's not a subdivision. <coughs> it's a zoning map change. Zoning map change. So, so this no is a one zoning is map change in favor of that. The individual called me this yeah. afternoon and he could not make it due to his wife. He couldn't get a caretaker for his wife, so he had to stay home. Mm. That was what he told me this afternoon. Okay. Uh, Nick? Yeah, I, I was just, uh, we got the, the new map tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the several lots have been removed, several yeah. lots have been added. Yeah. Uh, and I guess, I guess I'm not clear why the particular lots were removed. Um, I mean, it, it, if there's going to be lots that are subdividable, that's a value to somebody. Um, not that my clients have any interest at this present time in subdividing, but a future owner might if this goes through. Uh, and so it seems to me sort of cherry picking uh, who is going to be included and who is not. Yeah. Um, so, nobody else? No other comments? Well, I'll, I'll just comment then. Um, at the last meeting when we were presented with this proposal, as I said earlier, you know, it <coughs> made sense. I mean, we are, we are struggling in this community with finding affordable, and when I say affordable housing, I don't necessarily mean um, low-income housing. I mean housing for average people. Um, and so um, over the past, and I've been on the Planning Commission for, you know, long time, long time, close to 20 <laughs> years. Um, and we have constantly struggled with ways to try to get more housing in this community. <coughs> and so when we heard this proposal, sort of suggestion that we make this change, that was actually one of the things that I considered. It is an area that already has, an, and I'm not saying that, that you know, this is a done deal by any means, because it's not, but these were what went through my mind, and you have brought up some other points. Um, is that, you know, maybe some more opportunity for housing and ways to subdivide and, and make new units in this community would be great. We also have design review. So somebody can't just come in and put up something that is not, I, I, I'm, I'm talking as loud as I can here. No, we don't have, we don't normally have, we normally have nobody here. So, <laughs> so, so everybody can come forward if they don't, but. Um, no, I think, I'm, I'm just gonna continue on the way I am. I'll try to speak clearly, but, um, what I was saying is that we do have design review. So you can't, you know, people can't just put up anything. This would be carefully considered. But I think that what the points that you were bringing up tonight about really looking more carefully, it was very hastily done, I agree. And this map has, is, is <coughs> changed, you know, since our last meeting. And I really think that we as commissioners would like to look at that again. But it's also up to the commission about whether we even want to continue at this point. So. I'm going to, you know, having said what I said in support of doing it, I can see, I can see definitely a need for studying it further, and I can also, you know, respect all of your opinions, and so we can decide how to move forward. So I would like to ask commissioners what they would like to do at this point. Whether we want to just whether we want to scrap it tonight, or whether we want to explore it further. And. So um, from, from my perspective, we were really trying to accomplish two things. There was a particular citizen who had a particular right. request to be allowed to make use of the two separate houses that are currently on their lot as two separate dwellings so that they could sell one and live in the other instead of living in both of them. That's one concern. Um, the other concern, I wasn't honestly so much expecting that this would result in a whole lot of new housing. I'd be very surprised if anybody could actually realistically afford to put it uh, anyway <laughs> my, my concern was more that it, you know if, if we have zoning of a certain kind <coughs> this is your minimum lot size it doesn't really make any sense if everybody's lots are quite a bit smaller so uh, mm -hmm. I, the only thing that appealed to me was just trying to bring the zoning into you know line with what the lot sizes are uh, I certainly don't want to upset everybody in the neighborhood there's no point to that I mean it at the end of the day our goal is to you know do things in a way that makes sense for people in the neighborhood. Um, you know, to, to be clear, the way this process works is we come up with an idea and, you know, I'm sorry that everybody didn't get the information in a timely fashion, but the process is we come up with the idea, then 
you all get notified and come in and talk about it. It's, it's, this, there's was definitely no intention to do something without public input. And the process is come up with the idea, notify the public, get public input, and this is the time to do that. Thank you all for coming out. We appreciate that. Um, I wonder if maybe there's some way we can accommodate the original requester in some other fashion that you know makes sense for them. I, I don't know what that is. We you know just to be clear, we, 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 we cannot just condominium. Yeah. It, it does not make sense for us to take one lot in the middle of a one type of zoning zone in a different way, and that is the main reason why you know when this person came forward, they looked at the neighborhood and said, look at the lot sizes of all of the lots around us. None of them are really in compliance. We are big enough to subdivide, but we can't for this other reason, you know, think about it. Um, anyway. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so the other thing is that we are also, um, as we work through some of our other <coughs> issues that are on the table, we are supposed to be rewriting our village zoning at this time. And so that's another opportunity for the Planning Commission to really look at that in context with any other zoning changes that we may be making um, in with the village zoning. So my suggestion would be at this point is that we uh, table this. I don't know how we officially do it, Michael. You'll have to help me. Um, you just and, and just not take it into consideration until mm -hmm. we actually do our village zoning. Well, as Michael, Michael Pack did last oh, uh, month with Stacy's request, right. we deferred any action until we had more information. Or you could just defer it until we do the I would, I zoning would. rewrite, which was my original intent. Right, right. Uh, on this situation, but he wanted it faster. Yeah. And so, um, if we do defer it to our village zoning discussion, which will be hopefully in the next few months, um, we would love you all to be part of that broader conversation about village zoning too. So, because it's great to have community input. I mean, we we are, we sit up here and we're often in our own little bubble, but when <coughs> you folks come forward and make things, let us make us aware of things. It's very important. It's a good process. So. So I would like to have a motion if somebody wants to make one. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Help me here. Defer discussion until okay. we take on the whole village zoning? Yeah. Okay. So, so a motion has been made to defer discussion until we take on the village zoning rewrite. I second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Done. Thank you. Just a point of clarification: When you take on village zoning, <coughs> you will take on a co take it on comprehensively and not piecemeal yes, like this. Yes, I mean we 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 have already started in terms of rewriting. So I mean there are two pieces. We have the regulations piece, which includes the maps. So there is some adjusting. Um, every time we rewrite it, we try to do it every five years. It follows the rewrite of our town plan. So um, it's been longer than that. So. Hopefully we'll get to it soon. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to move on to our next item on the agenda, which is um, to amend the town zoning regulations, and this is the definition of general store. So, if any folks are moving out, I'm, I'm going to suggest that you do it now so that we can um, not get too crazy here. <laughs> Okay, again, this was a, an amendment that was brought to us by um, an individual, and since that individual is here, uh, maybe you could just give us a brief, a brief sort of reason for asking for this change. Okay, so uh, my name is John Endicott, I'm, uh, my wife and I own the Tassel store. Um, the store was closed back in, um, Back in June, I believe, and we um, subsequently purchased the, the building. Um, so our our goal is to keep the store as a community asset, a kind of a hub of the community, which it's been for 170 years or so. Um, country stores have been struggling in recent years, and most often, what you see is them being reinvented um, with some sort of food service. Um, either sit down food or more carry out prepared food. So our that's kind of our vision for the for the store is to maintain it as a retail country <coughs> store featuring all the wonderful Vermont products that we can source 
in the area, but also to have prepared uh, grab-and-go food and then also the, um, the option for tables for people to sit and have coffee. Um, and again, for the, for the store to be, or the store slash cafe, whatever it becomes, to be a community asset where people can gather and go in. Great. And I, I'm looking a little confused here because I don't actually have the wording in front of me. <laughs> I, I think everybody else is looking forward to it. So, yeah. so, see it. <laughs> so I'm hoping we have we have it here. I mean, I can I can probably dig in our minutes from last meeting. I thought I had it, but I, I I'm not finding it. Here's the definition. So so basically the. <laughs> The change, the only real change then is our definition of general store. So um, again, uh, for those of you that are interested in the process, um, when the Tassville Country Store came to us and said, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to change the zoning, we thought, well, you know, Maybe that's changing the zoning map is always problematic, as you guys have discovered. Um, that maybe we can do it in a different way. And so what we're doing is we're suggesting to change the the um, definition of general store. So our definition of general store currently just says a small retail store selling groceries and sundry items. And so we're adding the phrase with the ability to apply for an accessory use of up to 25 seats for consumption of food on premise. And that will be the zoning change that we're proposing tonight. And that's what was, this is a public hearing for that. I will say that we have received two letters of support for this zoning change, and um, that's all I have right now. Anybody else? Michael? Anything we else? have many letters of support for this zoning change from uh, the community. Oh, I um, only got two. Okay. So two no, I, I, co I copied them out, and um, oh. I believe there's like eight letters of support. I just got three more tonight. Okay. Tassville residents. Ta mainly Tassville residents, but people from <coughs> all over, from uh, Linden Hill, for example, was one individual. And, oh, uh, I didn't, did they not, did we not get them directly? I didn't get them directly because there were so many of them, I just okay. said. Uh, okay. So there were lots of, there were, I had two, but there were lots of others, I guess. I've so heard there has person support, support uh, you know, I guess it's anecdotal because I'm just saying it. Yep. But um, I've had two individuals tell me they're excited about this. Yep. yep. And I haven't heard any negative feedback. I have to talk with somebody who lives in the neighborhood. Very, very right. supportive. Yeah, the whole neighborhood is very supportive. So, yes. So I'm Mary Young Brulow, and I live on Butternut Lane, which is just four doors from the Tapsville Country Store. And I think just to echo what John, the new owner of the store, he and his wife have been um, trying to do is to keep the store as, um, as the hub of our community, which it has been for almost 200 years. Um, seeing the store close was really sad for all of us. Seeing it close today is really sad for all of us because it's where we go to pick up the paper and say hi. And I've had neighbors say it's, uh, one neighbor in particular said it's the one place that she gets to see other people because she lives alone and she's lived here for a long time. So there's no doubt that that's what we want in our community. I fully support John and Jen's um, undertaking and I think their ideas are terrific as a way to make the store viable because of other competition in the area for retail stores, just retail stores, quote unquote. Um, and so I just am here as a member of the community to support them. And I think that changing the definition is a brilliant idea and I totally support what's going on. Hi, I'm Gail Childs and I, I live in Taftsville. Um, I support it also, but I have some reservations that I'd like to um, put out there. Um, the, the folks, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful that you all, you know, Tafsil says it's a go, it's a go. And then one little person who says no, it doesn't matter. But I, but I matter because I'm the house that's right there. And I've had the post office there, I've been there 23 years. And uh, for 23 years, no one's been able to do what they wanted. Charlie wanted this, the girls before wanted it, and you guys wouldn't let it happen. So now someone comes in and everybody in Tapsville decides, yeah, we want this. I love the store there. I'm really sad the store is gone. I used to go there and get coffee and muffins. But what I object to is the 25 seats. I, I want to know, and, and that might be a very creative way to be able to get them to do that, but they still, I want to know about the parking because it's always an issue for other people. 
it shouldn't be this simple. Um, are they going to be cooking? Are they going to be food deliveries with the trucks that back up early in the morning? Eh, eh, eh. Um, we get the fire truck, we get the post office trucks now. We've, we've been there for 23 years and when Mildred was alive, she objected to anything that was going to change Taftsville. And um, it's a quiet community. And Deb Tucker lives on the corner. She could not be here tonight, but she does express the same concerns that I have because she is in a Taft house. I am in a Taft house, and this is a Taft house. Those three properties were built by uh, the Taft family. And um, it's a quiet community. That's why we're there. So if this is going to be a place where there's cars coming and going all day, I want to know where they're going to park. I would like to see a parking plan. Because I know I get people in my driveway and in the front of my house, just <coughs> if the post office is <coughs> parking is full, they come park in front of, they just pull into my driveway. And I just, they're okay with that, you know, they're in and out. But if they're in and they're going to sit there and commune all day and, you know, check their email and have a sandwich or two, um, I'm okay with that too. But I want to know, is there going to be cooking? Is it going to be a full restaurant? If you have 25 seats, does that mean four to a table? And is it 25 bodies? How many people will be coming and going? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer I that. I have a real and issue with that. And I'll answer that, and this is that we have changed the definition. This is still a conditional use, so that if they want to apply for that type of use, they will have to get a permit which then covers all of the issues that you've been talking okay. about. So parking, hours yeah. of operation, noise, and all of that will be covered when they come in for a permit for seating. Okay, there'll be and a so, hearing? And so, our, yeah, there'll be a public hearing and you will, as an abutter, hopefully you're not a diagonal abutter. I'm right there. Yeah, <laughs> if you So if you're right there, you'll, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, so this is not a permit to let them to do that. What is, yeah. this is a permit to allow them to apply for, this is a this change. This isn't a permit, this, this is a change that a will change. A change that will allow them to apply for a permit. Yeah. And so it yeah. says up to 25 That's and that, you know, and, and the, Town Sorry. Development Review yeah. Board will make those decisions yeah. about how many. So but yeah, okay. just to clarify what Sal yeah. is getting at, yeah. it's 25 maximum. It may be the case that their parking plan that they're able to generate will only facilitate 16 right. or 12 oh, or yeah. 3 or whatever it is. Okay. And the process by which that will be hashed out is the development review process. Okay. Right. I don't and see where there is a public mind. input portion to that process, and as an abutter, you should be notified. So when yeah. we when we wrote 25, our goal is to try and both match what other general stores are trying to do and yeah. give people enough space to be you know, yeah. productive without being crazy, I've basically. I've always been in favor of it, even when the girls were there. Why can't people sit there and enjoy a cup of coffee and a nice sandwich? That's great. But, but if it's going to be a full-on restaurant, I have to really hear what the plan so that, is. So you will have the opportunity yeah. to, to talk about that. Yeah. Awesome. Great. <coughs> um, yes. I'm Jane Rose and I'm going on my old apple butter in, mm -hmm. which is very close to the task force store, and I wanted to speak in support of this change. I think that our country stores make Vermont unique. They're a wonderful asset, and I can't even begin to talk about the asset just to Tapsville. And uh, I think that this change is necessary because the country stores struggle. Uh, even with food service, I think they struggle, and they're such a wonderful thing, part of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with that. I'm not here to object to it. I'm here to object to the number and what it is going to be. Yeah. yeah. So, any other comments about <coughs> Castle tonight? Okay. Oh, I have one other comment. I'm sorry. If that works. Mm -hmm then I am going to propose a zoning change for that little square. Oh. Because then Deb's house and my house should have the same consideration if 
we wanted to put a retail operation in there. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I will be coming to it. Yeah. You want to sure. make it a village? I'll make it a village. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, we'll, you know, it's, yeah. right now it's, you know, it's a Hamlet commercial. Is, and I don't know if you're in the Hamlet commercial or not, but it, it allows a, a, a country store, so, or a general store, so we'll see. Okay. Commissioners, anything <laughs> further comments? Someone want to make a motion on this? And I so, and I'm just going to explain one more time is that as we make this decision, the Planning Commission would may make the decision and then if they approve it, it does go to the select board who then has to have another another public hearing. So this is this is not yet the end of this. Okay. Sorry. Okay, I, I move that we accept the proposed definition, uh, change to the definition of a country store. Oh, Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I will give you opportunities <laughs> for, for task school folks to move on if you want. Uh, you can stay along. Okay. So the last public hearing we have on the agenda tonight is um, section. <coughs> now I'm going to get it right here. 526. Is it 526 or 526? 526. Okay, because it was posted somewhere as 525. Was okay, and so now I'm looking and I wasn't sure I had it right. So um, section 526, short-term rentals. Um, and this is something that obviously we've been discussing for quite a while. Um, and there, um, I don't know if folks want to me to go through all of this line by line. Do you have copies? I have Michael? copies. I have 20 copies. So anybody so that doesn't that want one, I assume most of you downloaded it. What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, the, the proposed amendment for short-term rentals. We have it. Yeah. So mine, mine says 525. It should be. I, I change it. It's the same thing. It's just 526 is the actual number. Yeah, if he 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 changed he miswrote the number somewhere, so it actually but otherwise is five twenty six. But it hasn't changed, even though the date has changed. It, we haven't changed anything in the right. wording. So, Michael, do you want to just pass them around? Yeah. I'm sorry. the whole thing as part of the previous. Okay, so Maybe as we you know, open this point. discussion, I'm going to say sure. remind folks okay. that this is this amendment is for the town zoning regulations only. This is not for the village right now. This is for town. Um, number two is because we've been talking about this for many months. Um, I would like I would hope that you would be able to keep your comments relatively brief, um, and it's already getting late in the evening, so. Um, ideally, if there is anything new, we would like to really, you know, if you have something that you feel is very new and different that we haven't already heard, you know, feel free to talk. But at this point, um, we're just going to try to move this along. So um, I'm going to open the floor up for public comments at this point. So anybody who wants to say something, let me know. Yes. Hi, I'm Barbara O'Connell. Um, can you just summarize where we are now I know we've had many meetings over a period of time uh, lots of documents you know uh, right. so on and so forth can you just summarize where we are and then where we need to go after this so tonight is a public hearing so the the Planning Commission voted on these changes to the town zoning regulations this is a public hearing for the public to respond um, if the town if the Planning Commission approves them tonight, it will go to the select board for their approval. And um, if there are minor changes, we can still pass it on to the select board. If there are major changes, we will, um, and we cannot approve it tonight if we make that decision. But to summarize the changes or, or what it is that we're going to be sending this on to the select board. It is <coughs> this it's in that document. Can you, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of new people here. Well, that's why we passed that's it That's why out. I passed okay. it around. So I just wanted right. to make sure yeah. that everybody knew what is it is we're talking uh, about. It's section 526, short-term yeah. rentals. Yeah, section 525. Can you just five, well, it's, well, some of them say 525. Some say 526. It's dated October 2nd. There's plenty more copies of here. 
Yeah, well, there's different dates on it. My, my system remembers it. Oh, oh, <laughs> the new one. Okay, the 526. So yes, so. 525. So they're different. Michael tends to date things different when he Are makes my Yeah. Why? Did she send it? Or it? We used it last month. Yeah, it's the same one. I think. Mine does say mine is my copy says 525. Mine did too. I just October 7th. Yeah. I changed. It's the same one. Though. It is. Sally, there may be confusion with what Susan handed out. Oh. So I would explain that to the audience. I don't know what Susan handed out. That so. <laughs> what I sent you today, I sent you an email. Oh, her letter? Yeah, and oh. she had a short, she had a read. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. she yeah. handed those out at the meeting too. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, I'm sorry if there is any confusion. The, the one that you should be looking at is the one that says town zoning regulations, and um, there is a draft date on it. There are a, either a date of October 2nd or November 6th. Um, section 526, and one says 525. This was where I got confused earlier. Um, short term. <coughs> so this is what the Planning Commission voted on at their last meeting. And um, there are items from A to L on this. And, you know, I could go through each one. It talks about the number of times per calendar year. It talks about owner occupied. It talks about um, minimum stays. There's quite a bit of information here. So if you haven't seen it, you want to take a few minutes to look through it. Um, grab a copy so that you can have it in front of you. <coughs> yes. I guess all I live on Farm Road. This Woodstock. No. Okay, hold on back. Back. Just a point of clarification. I have not been able to attend every meeting that's gone on a long time. I've been to a lot of them. Uh, I was unaware that you've already voted on this matter. Is that a literally a vote? Because yes. what's the purpose of hearing from us if you've already voted on it? So the process is that the Planning Commission votes on it to go to a public hearing. So uh, until we actually voted on it, we were taking comments from the public. So you, you're recommending this. You haven't actually voted on it. We Voting have, to me means you, have, you've adopted it. voted on it, and it has been adopted in the sense of when the Planning Commission votes on it, it is an effect. That's right. the way the law works in Vermont. Um, right, Kevin? Once we once we <laughs> vote on it, isn't it? When the select board. Oh, when the select board. Okay, so when we vote on it, it goes to the select board. and when But when we send it to the select board. Then the clock starts, but it doesn't become effective until the select board warns it. Right, but when does the clock start when we send no, it to it the select board? It becomes uh, effective at the, the least of the two become effective for at the time of warning. Yeah. Right. Morning for the select the board. Morning. So it's 15, no, for our meeting. So 15 days before our meeting, for whenever this, this is warned hearing. in the paper, it becomes, right. it's not effective, but it, 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 if any changes is there, we have to weigh both of the, of the current so sorry, document the and the proposed document. So I'm going to just clear this up with our regional planner here, who's not sure. Oh, it's, no, it's, it's 4449. It's the select board. The so, so when the when the select board warns it, it is in effect, as opposed to when the, the planning commission uh, sends it to the select board. Cor correct. Th there's it and your current regulation. I'm I'm Kevin Geiger for the Sorry. record. I'm with the regional planning commission. I'm not here to comment on this except I got asked. Um, <laughs> so uh, when any zoning change is warned by the select board, okay. they become effective for 150 days along with your current regulations and then it's up to people like Michael to figure out okay I got two sets of regulations how do I deal with that in the interim okay so until we until the select board warns that it is still just, just us making recommendations correct. okay that's clarified is that okay but we have already voted on it to have this public hearing which means we have language in place for discussion so is there anything we could say tonight that we change your vote you've already taken the vote are you going to take another vote before you go we to the we will board? take a vote tonight to send it to the select board okay. good um i understand what you just said is there any opportunity for any <coughs> of these points specifically point number c to be amended or to be discussed or to be revoked or to be um, encouraged to reconsider 
you, you can, the public, I mean, this is why we're having a public hearing, so you can certainly do that. And how do I do that? What is that process? Just Fine. in this meeting? Yes, that's this meeting. Okay, so um, do I officially state my yes. desire, which yes. is to have yes. the Planning Commission reconsider at least in point number C that they don't put a uh, restriction of the number of times for rentals um, and um, in, five acre. in five acre and forestry. And I guess my, my reason for that is that there's never been uh, demonstrated or any kind of convincing argument that that is necessary. Um, unlimited has always been the case. There's never been an issue. There's never been a problem. I think the thing that we keep asking, what is the problem? And in this particular case, that does not appear to be one of the problems. So I would request respectfully that the commission review that point and um, basically make it unlimited the way it's always been until it's proven that this is problematic or it, you know, whatever, whatever the argument is. And I don't know if anybody else has any other comment about any of these other points. All of the other points in this document appear to be um, agreeable to short-term rental owners. I mean, we're willing to do just about anything to cooperate and to register and pay fees and be inspected and to be the good citizens that we've always been. Mm -hmm. um, our behavior is not any different. Um, our attitude is not any different. In fact, we support the regulation. We support some sort of control or registry or some way that you know who we are. I think that was one of the beginning questions was how many of there are out there? How many, we don't know how many are out there. Well, this would allow us to register and let the town and the commission know how many are there. Um, so we're, we're trying to be agreeable. We worked on this before with other uh, uh, separate groups trying to come up with, with um, things that we would agree to. So if you would be willing to, to accept um, the fact that we are agreeable to all of these points with the exception of the one we'd like to be, at, we'd like to have it reconsidered. This is when the owner is not in residence that you're no. talking no. about. No, this, this is the number of limited. days. This is number of days. This is unlimited. Yeah, what she's saying is it's, it's, it's unlimited, unlimited if you're in residence. Yeah. It, it's, it's unlimited if you live there. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I asked. But it shouldn't be <coughs> limited if you don't live there. Okay. I mean, if you, if you live okay. 10 minutes away or 20 minutes away, if you don't live there, I think it should still be unlimited because it hasn't been demonstrated that if Sorry. there is not someone on property, that there is an issue. And you think there should be a limit on how many one owner can have? Excuse me? No. Should there be a no. limit on how many properties one owner can, can use for short-term rental? No. 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 I don't think that's ever been brought up. And what would be the reason for that? <coughs> You mean well, that, that only one person can have only one rental? Well, the concern is we have discussed that people come in and turn it into a business. And just buy up properties and, or just... Well, I, I don't know that that's been... Has that been done? We've had that discussion before and there doesn't appear to be any um, evidence of that. Well, then it shouldn't be a concern if you're doing it. Well, we're talking about two different things. Right. We, we were talking, um, we're talking about, about number C. C, which is the number of times that you can rent a property per year. And you said if you're not in residence, and I asked if you're not in residence, how many properties do you, is, is there a limit on how many properties you can have and rent out? And you said no. I don't see how that relates to this issue. If I own one or ten, I'm asking. You don't think there should be any restriction on that? No. I'm not sure that I follow what that what this that has to do with this. We we have had this conversation about multiple owners of multiple properties, and we know that there are some in town. So so and and it certainly works fine. You know, right now, but I think what Eric is getting to is whether there should be any. Because the owner is in residence, and you're saying that shouldn't be the case. The owner should need not be in residence. To have That's unlimited. what you want to change. 
to have unlimited numbers of days of rental for one property when the yeah what if this says now home, is when the property. owner is in residence <clears throat> yes right in c yes and you're saying that need, that should not be the case I don't the think owner the need owner not be in residence. Be there. My owner doesn't li ha need to live in that property. Okay, well, that's you're asking why it's relevant, so you want to take that out. <laughs> no, no. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> I do not believe that a property owner should be restricted to 15 times per year in that district. Period. Okay. Okay nothing to do with the number of properties that a person owns, it's the number of times that they can rent it per year. <coughs> but what this says is when the owner is in residence. Do you have it there? We, well, it, it, I, I, I think- So you want to yeah, change that too? It, Kat, Kat Gray, I, just to clarify and hopefully try to answer your question. Um, I, I, I think the majority of properties in Five Acre and Forestry right now that are active short-term rentals are standalone properties. They're, they're not uh, where, where an owner is renting a subset of the property, but rather an entire property. So, so there are very few, if no cases, of a short-term rental in Five Acre Forestry being owner-occupied. Correct. That they are full house rentals. Oh, so so there is that. no so opportunity. We don't know what the rentals are. Okay, so right, you right, want to change just, that wording too. Okay. Correct? Yeah. Correct. So it's not just the 15 days, you want to strike that sentence, correct? We basically want to strike that whole section. Okay. Yeah, so we that's want what I'm asking. Strike that yeah, whole that's section. Right. To clarify. Okay. Okay. Um, when the owner is in residence, the short-term rentals are unlimited. That is almost, it's, it's an unnecessary statement because most people do not live in their own homes and then rent out the whole home. They right. own a property, they live elsewhere, and they rent the property. So when the owner is in residence, it's unlimited. That's very rarely the case, that there is an owner in residence. <coughs> that, that's only for whole house rental. Correct. Right. So, that, so that's a difference. And, and that, that is an issue because we don't, again, we don't have those statistics, and we'll discuss that a little bit more. But let's go, let's go get some comments. Patrick. Uh, and identify yourself. Uh, Patrick Fultz, um, I own Sleep Woodstock Motel with my wife. Uh, isn't the solution for what they're talking about for them to be a, an in or a B&B? &B? No, 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 this is one, no. 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 no, no, because they're talking about, they're talking about whole house rentals where, they're talking about whole house rentals where, <laughs> yeah. where the no, I understand that, but the problem still, what the, the, I think what we were trying to solve here with the limitation was people coming in buying multiple homes and running them as a business. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I thought this, that was solving with this solution. Yeah, so if you're, problem. if you're, if, <laughs> there's no problem. Okay. Not right now, but we're trying to. Hold on, hold on. We're going to just direct questions to the commission, please, and up here. The, the, the idea is to stop this from becoming a problem. You know, and, and you know, you don't, you don't do, you don't not plan for something until it becomes a problem. Then it's too late. So the, just that's how you do planning. Planning is done to anticipate what potentially could happen. You know, and, and you try to balance it out. And, and as I've said before, the whole thing with short-term rental is balance between, is it a business? Or is it somebody trying to make additional revenue? Uh, you know, and if it's a business, then it should be treated as a business. And, and that's, that's the belief that I have. And I think that most of the lodging property owners who are businesses and run by a different set of rules. You know, and so we're just, the concern is, that, and it's happened in Killington, and there, it, people are starting to do it here now, where they're starting to buy the homes up and turn them into short-term rentals. And, you know, it's a huge problem, not just here, but everywhere in the country. And so the idea of what I thought of this was, is that we're trying to keep that from happening. So that was my understanding of, of C. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Susan Fuller, and I live in South Woodstock on an R5, so that's a residential five-acre lot. Um, I have been attending all of these meetings, and I've heard from various people on both sides. I've gone to social groups. I've talked about the regulations. I see this as being, and I handed out to you tonight, 
a set of papers where I have, and David has joined me, we've gone rogue, we've decided that we should take matters in our own hand and present something that seems to be very common sense. And this is strictly for R5 and R25. There is this catchphrase that keeps going around called level the playing field. Well, there is no level playing field between rural areas and village properties. Village properties are butt to butt. You know, rural properties have a lot of acreage. We haven't had any data, and they've not presented any data that there's problems happening out in the rural areas. So the idea is that we just don't know. I've heard that term, we just don't know. So maybe if we just knew, maybe that would help us decide that there's no problem. So I have the blue sheet that's gone around as a very simplified approach to what you can do to find out just what the problem is. You know, if there is a problem. And that we could register, like a dog license. Everybody registers their dog. Dog's got a little tag. Dog has to come in, and the dog has its veterinarian clearance. It has its spade part. It has its rabies license. Well, the same thing. We have things that we, as short-term renters, have to do for the state. So we'll bring that in with our little leash, and we'll show it, and we'll register. That should provide for every board with who's out there. That should provide you, Patrick, with who's out there. That, I, I, I mean, I, 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 but I'm, I'm just question. saying, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, we are then saying who's out there. Um, I've had people on where we live, which is very rural, say that they have houses that they want to leave to their children. Their children may have to do short-term rentals in order to keep it. Should they be forced to sell it? Because they can't. They're just now handing it down to their children. I think we need to be a little bit more cautious about how we treat all of our citizens here within the Woodstock area. And so I would propose that you take a look at what I've set out. And as I said, I think that they're very minimal. I think they're trying to use common sense, and I hope that you will consider those for R5 and R25. Dan Sullivan, still in West Woodstock, Curtis Hollow Road. Uh, I had two other questions, um, and these go to sort of my unique situation in a way, because I don't, I don't think it's been heard. I have a large farm. I have a large home. I built a three-bedroom house when my wife died so I could manage my large home as a short-term rental. I built that home four years ago. Um, my first question is, uh, they're all in one lot, two houses. Am I in residence? Hmm. Um. Or do I have to live there? Do I have to like keep one of the guest rooms so I, I sleep with my guests? Wait, I thought we dealt with that. <laughs> 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 that was the residence. Are they two separate lots or the same lot? No, same lot. Yeah. Same tax bill, same lot. Yeah, that is in residence. Yeah, Paul. We talked about that, and I'm looking for it in here. But anyhow, we'll clarify that. And the, the second point um, is the six, maximum of six. I have no problem with two per bed. I mean, I don't want to have crowds in my house. This is my home. I've lived there for 35 years. I've, I've lived in this home with my family. But I have a six-bedroom home. That's one person a bedroom. Hmm. There's no evidence at all I've heard, in all the hearings I've heard, about any abuse, about overcrowding, about anything that has to do with mismanagement of, of any of the units. But arbitrarily, without any backing, without any record to, to support anything, You've, you've arbitrarily said six is it. I, I, have, a, I have almost a hundred acre farm. You cannot see another house from mine. I, I, what the record is very clear on is that these two taken together, the, the limited number, will have dramatic economic effects on people who in good faith have relied on this short term rental f for years. I, I've been in this business for five years. Right, and nothing has changed with your property. So any I, I read this and I, you know, I hope you come to the court with me if, if, if I get <laughs> shut down by the next, no, I, I think no. this does, does affect me. This is a clarification 
we really do have to make clear is that if you have a if you have been operating as a short-term rental in five acres, nothing will change. So we will ask you, we, your so grandfather. So you are going to recognize prior existing uses? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. And yes. we've said that all along. That's been well, part I, of the conversation. I, I so, we're, you, so, right. so, so we're not changing any existing uses. We're just going forward. So even existing uses, we're, we're not, we, we have no capacity to require people to do any of this. Well, that was my final point I was going to make, but I'm glad. So, I, so I mean, ideally, we would like to, we would like to have people, you know, register and, and be part of, so that we know who's doing it out there. But nothing changes right now for people that have been doing. I have if, no you can, if you can, if you can show the that you are. Taxation, by the way, is doing it. Yeah, right. Job exactly. On your behalf. Exactly. So right. they so, know about me. Right. And, that, and, that's, <laughs> and that's part of the problem that we have is that they're not sharing their information, so we don't know about you. So even though the state does, we do not get that information. Um, they should share it with you. That's, that, that's well, ridiculous. I have, I have actually been to several meetings in the last few months with our state officials saying exactly that. And they they haven't come up with a solution yet, but we're part of this discussion at this at the statewide level for short-term rentals and what the state can be doing to help us as communities. So yeah, grandfathered uses are in place. You just have to be able to show that you are actually using your property as a short-term rental, which means if you've been filing for your taxes with the state of Vermont, that will that will show that you are using it. So, okay, um, yes. Right. Um, Mitt, just a quick follow-up. Um, will that grandfather use run with the land, or will, will that end with the current ownership? I can't remember how. That ends with the current ownership. Yeah. I, I think you just have to prove that you're a legitimate use at the time the zoning kicked in which was in March this year with that five acre uh, recommendation so if you're a legitimate use you have your state fire marshal's office you're paying your tax state taxes you should be good to go uh, so as long as that use is continued and you could sell it because it's a grandfathered use, although there is no permit to prove that, that makes it difficult. That's why you want to document that you are a grandfathered use. So Dan and others that are, you know, the Fullers and others that do have existing uses should document that they are existing uses and they can continue operating as they have been, as long as they're operating as they have been. So. Okay. Yeah. But it's, but it's yeah. hard yeah. with a grandfathered use, a permit is much more legitimate stuff, but as long as you can prove your grandfather, then you're good. So that would be conveyable right. without proof? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Michael, you might want to throw in there that if you stop doing it for two years, you lose that grandfather. If you stop for two years, yes, then you become not supporting. <coughs> you're not supporting you. Yes. yes. Brenda Blakeman, First Impressions Woodstock. Um, also, my husband and I have two short-term rentals that we have. Um, I kind of feel like we're really sort of not looking at this correctly. I feel like this is a different type of rental. So it's rent, we're renting a facility. It's just a short term as opposed to a long term. I just met the other day with my um, insurance company and I told them what I do. My insurance did not change at all. So I think that like Patrick has an inn, bed and breakfast, a hotel, that's completely different mm -hmm. than a rental situation. So I really think that we're kind of looking at this in the wrong way. That we're just renting, but in a different fashion than we're, we're used to. It's just a short term, we pay taxes, we do everything the correct way, we have to follow all the fire codes and everything else that any other rental would have to do. So I don't know why we're not looking at it that way as opposed to competing with someone with a bed and breakfast or a hotel or an inn or whatever. Okay, so I'll, um, is there anybody else? A few others, okay. Go ahead, Mary. Mary McQuig um, in South Woodstock, and we have uh, a short-term rental in, in our old farmhouse. Um, and I, I don't mind being regulated and, and having, you know, some stipulations, um, but I do feel like this is, some of these um, are a little cumbersome and will be hard to enforce, it seems. Um, you know, number of people in per bedroom and 
um, you know, number of times it's rented throughout the year. Um, you know, I, I think that's going to be to be hard, to be cumbersome. Um, I realize I'm grandfathered in, but I still feel like I would like the flexibility going forward. Like now, one of the apartments, we actually have two apartments. One, my, my father, who is 88, is living in one. You know, I don't know going forward what I might want to do with that. Also, sometimes it's nice to rent out, you know, the apartment. Long term, something comes up, a family member or a friend or, or you know, I don't know, there's lots of reasons might come up where you might want to rent it long term for a few years. And then things change. And um, I have an aunt that is in a nursing home. She has a home down the road, her children don't live around. They would like the flexibility, uh, they haven't done it yet, but they want to keep the house, they want to be able to come and visit her, stay at the house, but they would like <coughs> to be able to, you know, keep the house for now and, and bring some income in. Um, I don't know, I just feel like it's, this is a little, not flexible enough, I like, I like better what um, Susan has put forward here. Mm -hmm. Barry. Yeah, uh, a couple of thoughts. One is just a reminder. What? Uh, Barry Millstone. Uh, one is just a reminder that most of these regulations have been in place for over a decade. Mm -hmm. So uh, the five acre or more uh, fire marshal inspection, um, those are new, a few other, but fundamentally they've been in place. Um, and you, you're right, it's, 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 it's not to level the playing field, and it's Part of it, and an important part, is is impacts on the community and impacts. And for instance, uh, one of the um, I think one of the stated reasons to do this is to protect community uh, with people coming and going. It has a different effect on, on community and neighborhoods. Cars coming and going, people don't know who uh, who's around, and um, there is some data um, about even five acres or more. What I've heard is that. At least in this room, um, you know, I won't do a show of hands or a tally, but there are multiple short term rental owners owning single, multiple single family homes. That's data, and those are multiple homes that have been removed from the housing stock. Um, that's a problem, and it's going to be a worse problem uh, moving forward. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Melville, South Woodstock. I have a question on uh, Section L. Is this Section 526 report a new uh, document that has to be filed? Well, that's been, that's been in effect for what, two years now. And what does it we consist adopted the What does it consist of? It, it's a fairly uh, uh, basic report. We hand out a, a, a form, if you will, in uh, January for people to fill out by January 31st. You mean they're available to be filled we, out? We send it out to the current permitters. Okay. Right. There's permittees, people that have permits for these. Right now, there's only like five or six. There's not that many. Well, this is from last year. This year, there's many, many more due to this situation. So, but we will hand it out. It gives you the, uh, the date of this day, how many times people stayed, that kind of stuff. So. But um, that's something that motels and the Woodstock Inn aren't required. They do not do that. No, that's for the uh, short-term rental purpose. Yes. <laughs> The point is for enforcement purposes to make people realize that they should be, what they write down, they should be uh, complying with. Because many people do not obey the uh, 10 limit per year or 6 limit in the village. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, my name is Dave Nixow. I live in Woodstock. Um, I haven't been to a lot of these meetings. I tried to follow the minutes. Um, and. So I have a few observations. The first one is, um, be careful what you ask for. Um, there's an article in today's New York Times about many communities around the country that are now putting additional restrictions mm -hmm. on short-term rentals. In fact, the voters in Jersey City yesterday rejected short-term rental proposals that were supported by Airbnb. And it's happening in a lot of communities around the world recognizing that uh, many of those communities are larger than Woodstock, significantly larger. We're still a very popular destination, and therefore the need for short-term rentals is as acute here as it is in most of those cities. It's just a volume issue. 
So I would just say, be careful what you ask for because a year or two from now, we might be having this conversation. The gentleman who just spoke about taking houses out of the market is one of the most significant issues uh, addressed in that article. Also tonight on NBC News, uh, there was a story about Airbnb who is now addressing quality issues. And if we start going down that path, um, our reputation as a community will also suffer. So I think as you look at these regulations, they seem to be quite simple, but I think you need to be thoughtful about um, you know, what it is you're getting yourself into. I actually uh, applaud the Planning Commission on taking this issue up because I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, my number one issue is how is this going to be enforced? Yeah. And I suspect that if there was an actual survey done of how many Airbnbs and um, VRBOs that are in this market, that you would find that probably somewhere under 50% of them are actually licensed. And that's a pretty standard number around the country. So, you know, while I support the people who actually have Airbnbs, um, I lived next door to one for a year that did unlimited rentals every week every single week, non-owner occupied. So, and I lived with the consequences of that. So, it's not a simple thing, but I think enforcement mm -hmm. needs to be applied to whatever regulation you ultimately adopt in a way that's reasonable for the owners, but also protects those people who live in the community or live in the area next to them, recognizing that some live in the country. Um, and then just a comment about the 30 minute away. It seems like living 30 minutes is one, but how fast are you going to get there? So I think you need to think about whether or not a 30 minute distance from the location should be a 30 minute arrival and not a 30 minute distance because you could get there tomorrow if you live 30 minutes away. And if there's an emergency. Um, and then the issue of unlimited I understand the dilemma, but I do believe that the more of these that come and, and your comment about, so how many should you be allowed to have, um, is going to have an impact on the community. And I do think it's a business. So once you're not there, it's a business. So um, just some observations. Thank you. Me? I have a question and a statement. Uh, my statement is, you're, uh, I'm not taking a position one way or the other, I'm a village resident. Um, on item D, you got an approval required by an officer uh, with no standard by which the approval is to be granted or denied. And I just, in general, think that's bad uh, drafting. You have to have a standard when you have someone approving <coughs> something. Um, and my question, Sally, is um, <coughs> am I reading uh, C correctly to state that you can rent one night endlessly freebie well that's what it comes across that's at least my warped reading of C. you are not allowing more than 15 times in the calendar year with a two-night minimum stay so that's literally allowing 15 no more than 15 with two night minimum stays. You haven't even addressed the one night thing. I've got a loophole uh, a mile wide that I can uh, maybe defend somebody on. Yes. 
As a realtor, I'd like to say that <coughs> over-regulating short-term rentals will absolutely drive property values down. Your house is worth less when we over-regulate short-term rentals, and I'll tell you why. When you're showing houses, a two-year two sales cycle up here is not unusual, but it's shocking to people who are coming from suburban areas where houses turn over in a few weeks. So when you tell someone, that's not unusual here. I've had houses on the market for up to five years, and there's nothing wrong with the house. It's just every house up here is extremely unique, and it takes exactly the right person for that house. It's a matter of fit. There's nothing wrong with the house. But when they see that these sales cycles can be that long, and then you're telling them, uh, if anything happens in your life and anything changes in your life, you're going to have to look at all of these restrictions if you're going to need to Airbnb your house. They will go to the next town. They'll go to Queechee. They already are. They're going to Plymouth. They're going to Queechee. They're going, you know, a any realtor in town like, will tell you that they are already leaving this town because of this controversy. Um, in addition to that, like Randy, I just have a few problems with G, uh, parking, you know, it's a free country. They can park anywhere they want as long as it's legal. Um, H, oh no, that's not it. Um, I, prohibitions, weddings, I get that. Parties, like I can't tell people not to serve a birthday cake if they're in an Airbnb. Um, science, I get that. Outdoors, outdoor activities, they can't play baseball or have a, a fire a, a, in the fire pit. They're, they have to be indoors at 9 o'clock. That's not enforceable. Um, it was G, H, and I. Oh, F. It was F, H, and I. Occupus, occupancy shall be restricted to two, two persons per bedroom. Who's going to monitor who's sleeping with whom? I'm not. Yeah, they have bunk rooms. Most of these houses have bunk rooms. Okay. Yes. Uh, Janet Spangler. Um, I, I own 20 Lincoln Street. I have Airbnb at my house. Um, uh, my house is on the market. And I lost a potential sale. They loved the house. They wanted to be in the village. I lost it because of the restrictions of Airbnb. I, I can affirm that. They, don't, they didn't even want to be in the village after they heard that, so they bought outside the village. They're buying in Plymouth. It's yep. all going to Plymouth. Uh, Airbnb is a restrictive. It's the town. No, no, it's yes. the village. I know we're not talking about the village, but yes. just uh, backing up what she just said. George Crothers, 23 Mountain Avenue. Granted, it's not Woodstock, but our home down in Florida, we have an Airbnb next door. And last winter, for six weeks, we had a family of naturalists living next door to us. <laughs> and um, to entertain friends and guests, including my nephews and nieces, it was a little bit difficult. And we live on the Inland Waterway, and people coming up and down, it was a little bit difficult. So don't tell me about it's hard to sell or hard to deal with. I don't want to hear any of that baloney. That's it. Not and if you have to live, and, and who cares who sleeps with who, that's inside. But when you have to look at it outside, when you're sitting on you and I, no, that's it. I don't. It, I don't care if he was related to Johnny Weissmiller. You don't want to hear what he said about it. So no, it's a six week no, rental no, long term. It's, you know, a party is a party, and, but they're not all the same. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd like to comment also, Gail again, um, I'm also a realtor and I sell a lot of properties in the state of Vermont, New Hampshire and Massachusetts. And what, what's occurred here is Airbnb was established um, for a simple room rental in your home that you live in. That's how it started. And then it just kept mushrooming and they just sort of took over and I have the sympathies with those who own the inns and the B Bs because they kind of usurped a lot of those rooms away from those people who have a legitimate business. 
So then VRBO got into play, and I started to look, when I would go to Florida, I'd look on uh, VRBO, and then I started to look at Woodstock, and I started to see, oh wow, look at all these houses on VRBO. It is a business. And they really are the cause here, not us. And I think any human being who owns a property and can afford it, I'm a capitalist, I'm not a socialist, so go make money. And if you can make the money, in your home as long as you're there. What I don't like is, and I've sold properties to people who that's what they do. I have four people I sold to right in the village and what they wanted to do was not be here and rent their home. They come, they keep a room for themselves, they come up on the weekend. I do have a little issue with that one because of the reason you just stated. It's, it's a home. I can see renting a room in your home, if you're there, you have a big farmhouse, or you have an extra room with a bath, and you want to make some extra income. But now it's mushroomed into all of this, which has created this, which is good, okay? Um, I've always done everything according to what I'm supposed to do. I have 10 rentals in town. Those are annual rentals, no problems there. I have one Airbnb in my house. They come, they go, they come, they go. Never an issue, never a problem. In Taxville, there's four of them. <coughs> they never have a problem because the people are there, they're in the house, it's the room. It's the single houses that I think need the regulation. I do. And I think there should be a limitation because Barry said it really well, and I hadn't thought of that until tonight. As a broker, I'm selling a property, and then the people never live in it, they don't become part of the community, a part of, of Woodstock, and their neighbors. I wouldn't want to be the neighbor of a person who's renting their house all the time with them not being there. So this is bigger than what we're actually talking about here. And um, I, I do think the single homes, and, and it is a problem when people come in and want to buy a house and then they want to make it a business, well, they can't do it here because of all of our regulations, and they go someplace else. I'm okay with that, because the next person coming in will buy it, live in it, and enjoy it, send the kids to our schools, and spend money in the town. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a catch-22. It's, it's, it's this kind of an issue. But I'm all for the single the people renting rooms. That's a whole different setup than renting houses. Does that make sense? It's, it's two different factions here. So I think more thought has to go into this. Okay. Um, anybody else? Yes. Hi, I'm Eden Marceau County. I live on Heartland Hill Road. Um, I think I'd like to segue onto that. We, um, this town has fundamentally changed over the years. More than half of the people who own homes here don't live here full time any longer. So we don't have the community we used to have. We used to have lights on in houses. And honestly, given the choices, I'd rather, I mean, we already have strangers coming in for the bed and breakfast and the inns. There's strangers in this town all the time, uh, as long as they're not disturbing the peace and, you know, being civil to some extent. I'd rather see lights on in houses and people coming to our community and at least building our economy than seeing half this town empty at night. That's, it's hard to drive by houses all the time where you, like, you don't know them, they're your neighbor. You don't know these people at all. Like, they're not part of this community. So I think whatever we can do to bring people here and build our economy, I think, and it needs some regulation, but I think if it's supporting the people who actually live here and pay their taxes, I think that's great. Um, I'd also like to point out uh, the accessory on farm business. Mary, this would apply to you and people who owned farms that it's written into state law that um, municipalities with zoning regulations cannot prohibit it. accessory on farm businesses and part of that is farm stays. So I, I brought that for all of you here. I know I've brought this to you before, but I highlighted the parts that were pertinent to farm stays. But that's, that's how I feel. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have a question and then a thought. And your name? Oh yeah, my name is Alex Melville. Uh, I grew up here and I'm uh, staying with my parents for a couple of months while I'm here. Um, so, quick question on D with the, uh, the fire chief. Is this, maybe I'm missing something, but is that redundant because 
don't you already have to go and check with the fire marshal or um, someone at the fire department when you build a house and other parts of owning a house? No. Not entirely. The uh, current situation is uh, one may, uh, the uh, state fire marshal's office is not conducting inspections anymore because they don't have enough personnel to cover short-term rentals. So where there's an apartment, they would look at it, but if it's not an apartment, it's just a house, they do not inspect residential homes. So uh, they, they currently have a form one fills out themselves, and you can just fill out your own form, go through it, and there's no inspection per se of the premises. And the fire chief would stand in and do the inspection per the uh, state fire marshals ordinances and codes and that kind of stuff. So that's the reason why we put the fire chief in there to make sure that the inspection is accomplished. Okay. I believe that was a, a select board discussion as well, wasn't it? So, did you have another question? Yeah, just, then just a statement from trying to re represent the point of view of people who, well, younger folk. I think I'm one of the younger folk here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, He's younger. <laughs> yeah, he's younger. Um, I just want to kind of get that perspective out and my worries or worry. Um, so for me, Airbnb is kind of synonymous with vacation. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's actually a verb. Like, you know how you say, go Google it? We say, go Airbnb it. Oh, we'll just Airbnb it. Yeah. And it's representative of the fact that when I start having kids 10, however many years from now, um, I don't think... You can't base it just on me, but I think I represent my age. I don't go and stay at inns. I don't go and stay uh, at motels. I stay, stay at Airbnbs because it's warmer. It's already a home. It has that feeling. Um, and I could see that happening. I would bet heavily that that would happen in the future. So, so if you regulate these, like someone else was saying, they're just going to go somewhere else. There's also sort of a lost opportunity cost there because what do I look at when I go look at an Airbnb? I look at the stars and how many stars there are. And if there's more stars over in Queechy or Pomfret or wherever compared to here, just their algorithm, their, what I see, I won't see Woodstock. Um, I think that's how it works. So from the perspective of a young person, I think uh, I agree more with uh, uh, Susan Fuller's uh, proposal, mm -hmm. and I just think that I wouldn't, I wouldn't come here if there wasn't an Airbnb mm -hmm. or something similar with short-term rentals. Could be wrong, but if someone asked me on the street, that's how I would represent. 35 and younger, mm -hmm. I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna say one more comment. We we need to wrap this up because it's getting late. We've been here a while. I so, just Brenda. have one quick question. Gail, how many rental units do you have at your house? Uh, Airbnb? Uh, rental units. Oh, just two. At your house? Yes, and in Airbnb. All right, so three. Well, the short term. Michael just gave me the CO on that. All right, so that's yeah. three rentals plus your own your own living quarters, correct? No, my living quarters is the second rental. All right. Yeah. So you have three rental units at your home and two, two legal. I'm going to ask you to recommend to us because I mean, there's right. a question Yeah, here. what does, what do you, what do you get at, Brenda? I have two um, long-term rentals, mine and my, of uh, my tenant, mm -hmm. and then in my place I have one, I have three bedrooms and one of the bedrooms. Well, I was just like listening to yeah. all of your talk about you yeah. not knowing who's in the neighborhood yeah. and yeah. Wanting more yeah. Of the fuzzy yeah. and yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's right. true. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, unless somebody has something that's totally different and new, I'm gonna ask for a discussion here at the planning commission level. Um, and and I, I would like to go back to something that we talked about last month, which was really trying to understand what the situation is in our community, and that goes back to knowing how many we have, and that's how this all started because it was unregulated. Um, and so in the last month, we actually didn't get very far in that. <laughs> so I would like to propose to the Planning Commission that before we actually vote on this and send it on, that we do a little bit more research and, and dig in. Um, the Planning Office has been 
doing some of it, but they are very busy and they haven't been able to. And so we don't have a list right now of short-term rentals in this community. Can I make um, a motion? Sure. If you, I don't know. I would like to move that we task <laughs> the planning commission, the planning office, Michael, with going through the Airbnb and VRBO listings and cross-referencing them to the property ownership records of the town and determining, according to several criteria, a few things about all of the available short-term rentals in the. Okay, I want to know yeah. how many there are. I want to yeah. know which ones are registered. Yeah. I want to know where yeah. the people that own them live. Right. Those three things. Right. And I move that we task out the office to do that and that we table voting on this until we have that data to make reasonable decisions on the regulations in front of us. Can someone want to make a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Um, further discussion. I would like to say that um, in order to have this happen, I am willing to help. And I think that the planning office is very busy. This is a transitional time for our community. And I, I just, I, I think that we as planning commissioners need to put a little bit more effort into this as well. So I am, I, I think, I think we need to do this and I want to make sure it happens. Um, and if the planning office needs us to support them in that way, I think that we should offer to do that. But I will, I'm glad to have your motion go forward, but I just want to make sure that it's something that can actually happen. We, we, have, to, we, have, to, we have to figure out a way to make this happen. And I think sometimes we're going to have to get the listers involved. And realtors can also help us because you guys know what the world is like out there and you can, you can tell us, who we, you probably know better than we do, who is doing Airbnbs. So um, It seems like it's actually quite simple. Like every month, Michael goes through the Airbnb and VRBO listings and sends a letter to people that, um, who are advertising who aren't registered. But he, he does that anyway. I, do you know who they are? We do that, yeah. And we yeah. send letters to people that so are registered there, so but we're must, not catching them all because... But you must already, therefore, well, do you already have a familiar? list of some of them? I mean, where well, do we okay, start? Okay, the ones that I, we find, we send them letters and they come and get permits. My point, Michael, is that you're very familiar with looking at the maps right. and doing yeah. this, like, fundamentally basic thing of saying that property there is advertised right. as a short-term right. rental. Right. And you, better than anybody else I've ever met, know right. who owns which properties. And if you don't know, you're... It is a very tedious to process know. to go through because people are hiding their information. It takes a Michael, I'm while. Michael, I'm just asking... I will do it. Okay, I say we are doing it right now. Okay, My assistant is Over the years, you are perfectly capable of making all kinds of claims about who owns what. I just want to get... Real well, data. Some outside to make this. Yes. Get the well, post compliance. Oh, I'm yeah. several post compliance. compliance. And there's over I'm sorry. Somebody speaking. Patrick. 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 Short term Excuse me. Listen, those are the facts. Excuse me. Right now, you we're know, having this, this discussion. Michael here. do it. He's only so, gonna find. Patrick. You know, this is ridiculous. Okay, Eric. What? Eric, uh -huh. would you like to say that again? I said, why don't we get an outside resource and. Funded through the EDC and do whatever well, research gonna, is that's necessary. Gonna take, well, that's going to take time. I, I, I think this is something no, that we are doing this currently, and she is going through each little quadrant of our zoning map and digging this up. It is taking time because right now we're in a busy permit season, but in December and January things are going to slow down. I hope, and uh, we're going to get more okay. feedback on this. So there is a motion on the motion and a second on the table. To table. Or to, what did you say? I said that we defer <laughs> voting defer on this voting. Okay. Yeah. until we voting. have data, and then I think we should have a reasonable discussion about what that data tells us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Okay, so um, we're going to keep going. See how many years we can make it
more to talk about. Thank you. The site plan is getting very important because uh, okay, well, okay, well, the if site kid can see the farm, they submitted an application <laughs> to build a parking lot. This site plan would be very helpful to have that criteria to be able to review that parking lot. We have another, we have three more other farm situations coming up on us real quick. Now. Do you have something written for the site plan? It's very simple. You just add. Oh, but we, do we know what it is? I don't know. Can we what just get him out of here first? <laughs> no, because it's going to take a little bit longer. Did right. you see what Michael drafted for rural retreat? Here, why don't you look at that while he. Yeah. It's not a touch screen. Can you brief me on the site plan? What am so, I missing? Because we don't require a site plan for... You just have to add agricultural events to the site plan criteria. There's a list of site plan criteria <coughs> in your thing. Multifamily housing, commercial, agricultural events. On site plan review? Right. No, we would add under site plan review. Yeah, which is which section? Section 809. 809, which is page 63. So you have no planning, no zoning permit may be issued by AO for any commercial, any commercial industrial, industrial, public, quasi public, 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 multifamily housing, blah blah blah. Until site right. plan. Oh. Until site plan approved. So if you just add agricultural event to that, boom. Well that does kind of make sense, doesn't it? This is where we go. I mean people come up to us and they have these things that make sense. <laughs> Until. <laughs> until, until, until everybody else hears about it, it's like, oh, yeah. But I agree. I but mean, actually. but yeah. can we regulate an agricultural use under that, the state of Vermont? That is what we're allowed to do. Know, is but do site plan review. We can't regulate the use. Sorry, I'm sorry. The conditional use. Is this a way? I'm sorry. I don't understand what we're trying to accomplish here. Is this a way to have yeah. agricultural activities by having an agro? No, this no, is no, this no, is no, by no. saying if somebody is having an agricultural activity that has right. requires right. parking, right. Yeah, that there example. is a way for us to look well, at a parking lot. Landscape plan. the parking lot. Yeah. Look at lights, so that if somebody noise, if somebody like a large farm in South Woodstock decides to have public events, mm -hmm. there can be a site plan review. Right. And then but but the critical Traffic piece is that control. it allows the neighbors also to weigh exactly. in on, you know, they don't want people parking on 106. So would that so, happen, would they do it like one time and scale their that propose a couple of different plans for different size events or something? Yes. Like get yeah, approval and then the yes. approval would yes. run yes. with yes. the property? It could be up to 20 or 200 yeah. people or whatever. Because okay. that parking has to equal... No, I understand. I'm just wondering if they're, if they're required to do it for each event or if they no, can no, 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 do it a few times, times in different ways. To one time time so say they want to get permitted for so like a three different size event. Agriculture is okay. separate. It has to be listed yeah. separately. Yeah. It can't be included in yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the agricultural law does allow that. Yes. I've been trying to get this pushed into the regulations so this is a, for a while. 
Okay, so this is a way to have some say about the parking, yes. despite the fact that the state of Vermont right. says farm based well, activities are allowed. Uses but are we're allowed to look at the site plan to make sure that okay. lighting is not, a, mainly lighting and screening are the key issues that come up. But stormwater is also a, an area where people do. Okay. Which needs a little review. So it's just the site plan criteria that are listed below uh, 809 there. So. Well, it sounds logical to me. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Agreed. So but it's a tool that we're allowed to use that we haven't been using. Who's going to fight it? <sighs> what are we not considering? <laughs> I mean, so what? <laughs> here's a, what? What is considered? Um, it's per what, the. What is considered ag agricultural? Law. Okay. Per so the ag law. So that, currently, uh, the one that what sort of things that are, us. <laughs> well, What sort of things that are currently happening that we don't review would we all of a sudden be reviewing? In other words, there's not there's, a feast and field in Woodstock. No, there's a parking lot now. For Prim Singh wants a 20-car parking lot mm -hmm. in South Woodstock. He wants to put lighting on it, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't have any control over no, no, it. I, I understand. Is that, that an instance. agricultural event that he wants the parking for? Well, It's it going to be for right. his use of the farm. Oh, it's but, for the Oh, he has a farm yeah, so he's going to invite visitors to come to the farm and do tours, like it's like Ian was just talking yes. about, it's, it's like, these yeah. farm stays. I, I'm shop. just trying to get at what other, I, I understand in that case, that makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. I'm just wondering, yeah. are there other events that are the same with Conklin, right. Conklin's situation, the Conklin farmer. Yes, the guy who was here last month. Right. right, the guy who was here last so, month, right. But I, I also wonder, though, if we just say agricultural, is that too broad in the sense of you know, somebody's starting a farm and they have to go through site plan. I'm saying agricultural events per that law. That would I think we need to very explicitly state agricultural events, events per the and I Vermont. Do, I do law. have that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Is no, that, that is part of the, there's you, a definition for that. Did you write this? Around. Did you write? Did you send this around? I just didn't. No. I didn't. I missed it. Too. I didn't get this one, Michael. I didn't, I didn't either. Room. Like, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I see it on the agenda, but I don't. I'm not sure. I didn't get the wording for it. I, didn't I feel know like I'm I pretty good about these two. I didn't either. I, I, I was really careful to pull everything out and I missed this. Yeah. Was so it one of his reporting forms? No. No. It, it wasn't included in any. I don't. Yeah, I was really mm -hmm. careful. It seems to be happening more. Yeah. Um, okay. Well. I, I don't have any issue. I mean, it seems like a reasonable No, it does. Way to it does. It. it does. I mean, I don't think we do that. Well, let's get the language right because yeah. last time we got in trouble because agricultural of that. events. Yeah, so that. But as a definition of what an agricultural, I mean, I think it should refer to um, whatever that act was. I think it's going to be in here. You said. <coughs> you mean the state act? Yeah. Is, does she have it on that? Is it, yeah. yeah, I don't have what I said to. No. no. Yeah, it might on be in her thing. Yeah. I did send it around. Oh. I sent it for the last meeting. Oh, for the last and meeting. Oh, okay. That's why I Emails that old. No, I didn't. I, I filed it. Does she have it yet? Emails to your article education chapter. Access, uh, uh, accessory businesses. Is that what she was highlighting? Accessory on farm businesses. Yeah. Is that what you want, Michael? Yeah, it's here. D. Whatever. Review permit activities of accessory on farm business that are not exempt under section 413 of this title may be subject to site plan review. Pursuant to section 4416. This is the law, the state law that allows us to okay. have yeah. that site yeah. plan review. Yeah. The one that okay. we have some right. subset over there? Right. Then in October I sent you the site plan language and okay. I included a definition of agricultural event, which is taken directly from this law. And I'd have to download it from the computer, and I don't have the time to do that. Hmm. Okay. So we can kick this can down the road. Accessory uses. Here it is, right here. What tape? I don't know. It's oh. in my file for okay. October meeting. Oh. Agricultural events and accessory uses. These are events and accessory uses associated with agriculture per Act 143, which shall be located on a farm regulated by the AAFM under its RAPS. It's and the <laughs> operation wow. must be subordinate to the farming operation to be considered accessory. C, 24 VSA, section 4413D. Oh, perfect. Yes, yes, Seems yes. well defined. <laughs> that's the middleman. Yes, yeah. Well, that's the language. 
So mm -hmm. we can decide to do it tonight or we can wait. I mean, and then, then we have to, reasonable. And then we have to add. So that, that's a definition for agricultural events <coughs> and accessory uses. And then under site plan approval, we will and add we, agricultural events and accessory And we looked at the wraps because this is the regs yeah. we tried to replicate. Right. Mm -hmm. right. 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 I mean, I don't see inherently an issue with it. I, I just want to make sure that there's not something great going on that we're about to make very challenging. That's well, why I'm asking the question. The public will certainly let us know. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, this is the sort of thing that could slip through pretty quietly. Yeah. This is not something that there's a current. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, if we go to public hearing and you don't like it, you can deny it at the next hearing. I'm comfortable doing that. I you want to make I don't, yeah, I don't okay. see where okay. this would be a problem. Okay. But is that a motion? It's a very simple tool. I move that we um, add the language. Mm -hmm. Hold on. This has to be a little bit. Okay. Wait, do you want to want this? Well, I would know. I'd love to see it written down. Is this what we're hanging out? I have it, too. This is about it, too, so... I didn't realize it was for last meeting. I didn't either. Okay. Yes. I've yes, it came from Michael. Mm -hmm. Sam is making a motion. I move that we add that language to site plan review. I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry to beat on that, but it's really simple okay. and I think very okay. important. Let's go to um, rural retreat, which Michael did send, and I do have that in my yeah. file here. Okay. This is a very basic start mixing a bunch of stuff together here. And uh, <coughs> I addressed everything in her situation except for the 140 people she, she would like to have attend from time to time. But I just threw this out as a start on how we could look at this. This gets problematic when cause we have to make this equitable to all, essentially, but we want to also restrict it and not have it be everywhere because everybody could do something like this. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, it's a balance here that's very difficult. So how many in this situation? I was going to say dead end road. No. <laughs> no, but how many, how many um, hundred acre properties do we have in this community? Oh, well, there's a bunch. No, but I mean, oh, I'd say at least twenty. That's not a bunch to me. That isn't yeah. that many. When you consider their way. I actually want to go through all this to do it. And, and well, I know, but, but that's the, my the, point. The, is that but they're located more than a thousand feet. That, that gets right. to be another so. key element. There's many hundred acre properties, but. So I would like to actually identify <coughs> what those properties are. Yep. I'm sorry, it's not clear to me here. Are weddings permitted? Yes. Uh, yes. 50 less people. Than 50. Nupial. Less than 50. Did I call it nupial? Nuptial. 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 No amplified music. What is the title of this? Rural oh, Retreat. Rural Retreat. Yeah. I mean, I like, the, I like the idea. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, it's something that we could use in this community. Mm -hmm. but, um, Absolutely. Uh, I, I do wonder... Uh, you know what is what does it really mean in terms of the numbers of properties, and is is that are these the right numbers for it? What's the rationale behind no more than three employees? Where's that? It's under Number the next five, page. B five. Oh no. Um, that was uh, picked over from the home enterprise. Okay. I, to be honest, I did start with the home enterprise and then pulled things in and out. Mm -hmm. So does that, do you want it to sort of relate to like how many people come and go from the property routinely or is it, is it really just a holdover and you're not attached to it? It was a holdover essentially, but then again, if you don't have three employees, they are going to be coming and going and they're not going to be staying on site. Do you have mm -hmm. parking requirements for them? And that I, I just always kind of want to say, well, like what if somebody wants to do a great job and have a really amazing rural retreat and, you know, yeah, have, they really have 50 employees who are three people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what if you want to have like the twin farms of rural retreat Exactly. Or yes, I mean, yes, yes. That would... Yeah, yeah, ostensibly yeah, be good yeah. for the community. At, at yeah. three is so just, do we yeah, need to limit employees? I wouldn't even if limit If we're limiting the number like of events and the number of people can attend. I want, I want, more, people <laughs> <laughs> I want more people who can call themselves a full-time yeah. employee or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the number yeah. of employees is... But if you had 50 cars going up and down the road, the employee, yeah, that could be an issue. So, but they'll still have to meet all the parking standards. True, true, true. Um, so that can be addressed that way. Take the bus. So we're limiting this to 50 attendees at every event? At the moment, that's just a start. Okay. okay. She okay. wanted 140 for 
I forget how many. I have that. Yeah, I, I think that's the that's a small that's a small nuptial. And you know, fifty seems tiny. If it was a corporate yeah. retreat, what if they have sixty? You know, because she wanted one hundred and forty was a limit for like ten events or something. That seems like a lot to me. Ten 140. events for one hundred forty, one hundred forty, one hundred. I'm 50, 50, 100, trying 100. to get my Thanksgiving list pared down a little bit, and it's pretty <laughs> easy to get into like. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me, I don't know where we're going to put them all. I'm going to have to rent out the neighbor's house. No, you can have mine. Thanks. I, I, I would be happy to see B6 grow to more than 50. I mean, I, I agree. I would agree. In my mind, there's something more severe as you get close to 100. But I, yeah. I think yeah. I could see that it being like 85 or something and not having an issue with it. I think it's pretty easy to get to 50 people for the kinds of events she's considering. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't run them myself, but well, if there were cases where it was a number higher than that, could you get a variance or some kind of special use to say she was contacted by Lucy McKenzie who wanted to do their annual right, fundraising right, dinner right, gala right. there, and that's 150 people, 140. Yeah, and you that have was caterers a, coming. Could you do like one or two events that year? Yeah, it's not like that's, 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 that's kind of that's marketing that's, it every day. That's sort of what I'm thinking is that maybe. Maybe oh, yeah. it's a limited number of events. And that's how, right. actually how we were working with the integrated yeah. agriculture yeah. was yeah. it had a right. tiered thing where right. you could have, you know, as many as you wanted, 20. But mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so no more than Well, let's go back to that. 15 of Go back and look at that integrated ag that we already wrote. It's in your uh, yeah. ordinance. It's in our ordinance. No, no, the one that we were writing, the accessory on accessory agricultural use. Oh, oh that. Uh, well, we were working. I mean, we were we were yeah, no, we had a lot numbers. of numbers. No, no, I got numbers in there. But if you do five events at one forty, is that helpful? That's, I think a one forty is a lot. One forty is too many. One hundred twenty. Five at one twenty. The, the other fifteen at fifty or less. I mean, this seems like something that somebody could come back to us. Well, and I say, think I think one hundred fifty small for a wedding. <laughs> 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 I think we got one hundred fifty people in our backyard on River Street. I, I know. I mean, I've done two weddings yeah, in the last two years, and believe me, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I goes quickly. <laughs> but 150 is a lot of cars, too. That's the thing. There might be alternate. Um, I could look up the, I can't look up those numbers right now. My brain is not there. <coughs> Sorry, I'm searching for. Uh, I can't find it. What about? That was like last March. Is it? Integrated agriculture? Is that what we're looking at? No, plan section, ed section yourself. Here we go. 9, 12, 18. 9, 12, 18. Yeah. Sorry. I don't have 18 on this computer. Oh, 9, 12, 18. Yeah, Michael sent. Well, I mean. I don't. I think that that's reasonably likely to be the most recent one, but I'm not certain. There shall be no more than 150 participants for any event. Event size shall be defined as follows: less than 45 attendees is small. Uh, 45 to 150 is large. There shall be no more than 150 participants for any event. Hmm. Okay. No more than events six at a given events, yeah. farm shall be limited as follows: no more than six large events per calendar year, and no more than 20 events 20 events per calendar year. Overall event size shall be limited that the resultant increase in traffic to the farm shall not be unduly burdensome to the neighbors. Should they such that. But I would we be perfectly happy taking that number nine and putting it into this because we did discuss that. At I know, Nazi. I know, I know, we did. Yeah. I think it should be the same. Oh, we did, believe me. But I think we should. I, I think those. I think those were numbers that we we felt really comfortable. Out. I mean, when you, we start doing it, what is the season you're going to be doing outdoor events? And you know, if it's six months of the year that you can realistically do it, it's really only. And like in fact, five. the number ten is quite good as well. But that ends up <coughs> two a month during mm -hmm. the summer months. Number ten in that same document is pretty good. What uh, was number ten? Neighbors uh, within one thousand feet. Yeah, events, I agree. One hundred participants and or amplified music shall be notified by mail one week before said event. Um, we can we can we can get you this draft too so that if you want to if you want to see what we wrote for that one and see how it sort of matches. I think we found it. We found it. That's Stacy's 
email what she was. Sorry. That wouldn't even matter. Oh, okay. 105 yeah. <coughs> 140. So. I like that language, but I don't push it. So we just found it. Yeah, we found what we had. Um, so I think it's a good idea to be consistent and use these yeah. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Yeah. We spent a little bit of time on this other one. Yeah. So. And this one, the other one was for farms, sort of accessory events on farms. Mm -hmm. um, so this rural retreat. Could Is there a way to get a permit to do more than that? She's gonna have to tell people no because it's should they're over 120. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's 150. 150. Yeah, 150. Oh, 150. Yeah, 150 is the Yeah, okay. there would be six events that could be up to 150. Six events, so there's yep. a limit on it. Yeah, and then a, and a total limit of 20 events. 20 total. So you could do 14 small ones. Gotcha. It's hmm. a limit. What, what is your impression about how workable that would be? As a businessman, I hate limits. I mean, yeah. <laughs> when you say limits, I say, why would I do it? Yeah, of course. But, I mean, that's up to Stacy. But the numbers, that if you're saying 150 max. That's six that's, times a year. That's your her, email asked for five at 140. So, yeah. so we were just you're taking it one. I think that fits in there. I mean, I would love to say that um, we're super reasonable, and if somebody yeah. comes back and says that this isn't working for me. Right, she comes on. Um, however, you know, you just heard a bunch of people say, you guys made some regulations back in 1980, and I don't see, you know, why we should ever revisit something that some people <laughs> in 1980 made. So right. it's possible that yeah. whatever we do will wind up sticking. Yeah. It depends on. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we want to sit on this for a month, or do we want to? I'd like to see it rewritten with the language okay. that we were just talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, combining what yeah, we've already yeah, discussed. Yeah. Do we want to farms. do things like the um, the time limits? You no, know, the out outdoor events yeah. cease by ten. Yeah. Yeah. So we can use yeah. a lot of this. Noise impact shall not exceed yeah. sixty decibels. No fireworks. I think that the reg in. Michael's. I think the rural retreat has no amplified music, doesn't it? Or not? Yeah. yeah. It, it, yep. it, 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 okay. Is that acceptable, or is that that seems like a pretty weird? Well, if song. you're gonna have a wedding, well, I don't know how you don't have amplified music if you have 150 people. Right. I mean, these days, amplified music is. Yeah. yeah it could be like somebody's little yeah. Bluetooth speaker yeah, yeah, that yeah, they yeah. stick on the wall. It is. It is. <laughs> so oh, wait, they can get. I tell you. I think it makes more sense to put a noise yeah. limit, a volume really? limit. Really? Just leave it. Just remove that. and Let the noise limit. Dictate. Well, why don't there's a noise limit above. Yeah, and I think that um, we went around and around about this. I actually recall taking a big speaker out. And yes, 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 um, yes. Does the in go till 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock? 10. 10. 10. 10. Are they limited to 10 weddings a year? Is that the in? The in? The 10, ten, what, ten weddings. 10 oh, weddings. How many are they? How many are the in? Yeah. yeah. It's like 14 a year or something. Okay. okay. Somewhere in there. Fourteen outdoor ones, yeah. Outdoor, yeah. When the winds just right, the music's awesome. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome. Okay. Anything else? Um, so we'll we, we'll we'll massage this, but I think we're okay. We're feeling pretty good about it. Anybody like else have any comments about it? I think Should no. we share? Sarah's, Sarah's falling asleep. No, I could pass yeah. with uh, <laughs> the draft. I'm sorry, is it Stacy? Yeah, it's Tom. Right. Yeah. But you're saying Stacy has uh, she has more of a feel for what the. How impactful these kind of restrictions yeah, are. Yeah, her business. Her particular yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. Stacy and I have been emailing. She's a okay. So yeah. I can email Stacy what yeah. results here and mm -hmm. move forward. We'll work yeah. it. We're getting there. Yeah, I think workable. Wendy still Much has something. Much better than the last go around. One more, one more. Any other public comments? So Wendy has something here. It, it's a public request for clarification. Okay. I, I'm um, from the minutes. What, where did we leave off with the 526 proposal? I'm not clear <laughs> what you're reviewing and counting. Um, if you could just clarify for me. Please. We want to know how many short-term rentals there are in the village and in the town. We want to know um, of those short-term rentals, which people own them, and then where those people live. So in other words, we want to be able to answer the question, um, how many, many short-term rentals are there? Of those short-term rentals, um, how many are there where one person owns you know multiple instances of it and then for each short-term rental how many people who are uh, for each short-term rental is the owner somebody who lives in the area is it somebody who lives actually on site or is it somebody who lives elsewhere and I would love it if we could get some nuance to that because I happen to know yeah. that there are a number of people who spend half the year here and for the other half the year 
rent out the short term renters. And so it, what I, this is what I needed clarification. I wasn't sure if you were focusing because of the, these regulations proposed for the R5, if you were focusing on that region or if you were focusing on each, uh, every, and, and this is based on what permits have been filed. No. no. It's going to have anecdotal no. as well. <coughs> on going on to um, short-term rental sites and trying to identify who is who is advertising rentals in Woodstock. So it's a comprehensive look, and you voted on active support and timeline. So we didn't vote on a timeline. We, we, we what we said, said is we're... I'm sorry? Said for the next meeting. Okay. Isn't that what you said? He said he might have time in January. Yeah, I thought he said he might have time in January. That's what I was saying, December, January. But I would also add to that whether, if we can also identify if they're whole house rentals or just rooms, too. So with this comprehensive data, are you going to go or back around to a new public hearing? We haven't closed, the, we haven't closed this yet. So this is a um, pause. Yes. Yes. Well said. And this is a still a live topic where the public will be invited back? Oh, of course. Yes, always. But it, it will be not given a note. It won't be a, a warrant hearing like this one was. Well, we publish our agenda prior to the meeting, don't we? We will. Well, we can re-warn it. We can re it, yeah. So yeah. I was just, I'm just trying to get yeah. my bearings on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, we'll make sure that everybody knows about it, believe okay. me. And, and I'm sure if that one person knows network. about it, everybody's going to know about it. If Macy <laughs> knows about it, we're good. <laughs> Well, this is the first time we've had Macy here, so thank you, Macy, for coming. This is great to, yeah. now you can see, this is probably the most people we've, well, not the most, but the most, so two, uh, two big, the topics, most, in two big topics in yeah. one yeah. night. But it was nice thank to have you, our little Tassville interview. So, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tassville was really <laughs> sweet, wasn't really it? Really zoning we made. Yeah. Oh, right. we're going to do that tonight? Yeah. No, we can push that. Education, education. education.